welcome back everybody. This is Barry and Eric again here from Moss Pond. And uh, we've got another video concept we're going to explore for you today. And uh, we were thinking about different video ideas and stuff like that that we could, you know, cover you guys would be interested in. And we thought, hey, you know, why don't we do a couple of videos where we talk about, you know, great guns of a certain type that you can get for a certain amount of money. So in right. this video, we're going to discuss um, basically five great handguns that we think are good handguns that you can get for under $350 or right at it. So, um, you know, there's there's not a ton of options out there. and We're talking new now. We're not talking what you consider on the used market. Right. These are all new handguns, and they're all under 350 So, uh, Barry, why don't you start us off here? Well, I've always not really been too big of a fan of the, of the uh, Smith & Wesson Sigma series, but this is a SW40VE, and uh, we've had a lot of good luck with these. Of course, yeah, everybody knows these are made just like a Glock. Now, they've improved this gun with the, this is an SD40VE, but they've changed the whole contour of this weapon. The grip is different, you have serration front and rear, the sights are better, and most importantly, the trigger is a lot better on this gun than the old. Yeah, that was uh, one, uh, one of the shortcomings of the original right. Sigma, was that the trigger is uh, very you know, long and creepy and stagey, and it's, it's very heavy. In terms of the triggers on these, there are a few options you have, but really it's, it's going to require a gunsmith to lighten the trigger on standard uh, Sigma. Uh, there is that option. I think what Smith & Wesson realized with the Sigma series guns and the SD9VE, especially this gun, uh, was that you know they saw a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of the uh, do-it-yourself types out there that were improving the triggers on the Sigma, and I think what pretty much ended up happening was they took notes on it. Right. And, uh, and incorporated that into their production line, I believe. It's a 15 shot, 9 millimeter. You can also get this in a 40. Uh, semi automatic, Glock reach gun. Uh, no safety, just like a Glock. It is striker fired. But for the money, $350 brand new, you cannot beat this gun for what it costs. What it is. Yeah. And Smith wised up on this one. I never understood for years. On the Sigma, if you wanted to put any kind of attachments, you have to get an adapter, just like you do with this, uh, some of the models of the C. An adapter here, where the new gun, it's just a standard rail. I don't know why they never made this in the beginning. That doesn't make any sense, but hey. Getting back to Kitchen Gunsmith, and we had a guy come in here one time with a laser mounted on a Sigma. He had taken a serrated steak knife and carved the rail down until it would slip on there and he tied it down with a screw. He took a serrated steak knife and he cut it almost so deep that the serial number plate was coming out of it. But why Smith ever did this, I have no idea. Why they didn't do this in the beginning is a total mystery. This is a, this is a standard rail that will fit any uh, any kind of accessory that fits a standard rail like a Glock or any other gun like that. So they but finally got that right. Despite their shortcomings, they are great guns. Um, for the money, you can't beat them. Anybody that comes into the shop here, if they're looking for a good quality, high capacity handgun uh, that they can get for around 350, that's always the gun I recommend. Now, another gun that I recommend to folks that are looking to get a quality gun but they don't want to spend a ton of money, um, the Keltec PF9 is a wonderful setup. Uh, it is a single stack. It's very slim. It's a double action only, striker fire type arrangement, lock breech, semi-automatic, nine millimeter polymer frame. Um, they're not the fanciest guns in the world, but for what they are, I would say for the for the money, uh, you really can't beat them. Uh, they, they function fine. They're reasonably accurate. The triggers are decent. The sights are usable. But, again, for someone with $300, uh, that's definitely a quality handgun. You lose some of the capacity, but you make up for it in concealability. Got a little burst of thunder 380. This is a CC model, concealed carry. What they did, they shaved the sights down, they shaved down the controls. This will fit flat in your pocket. It's got a decocker. Now, I just did a gun class today at lunch, and a man had one of these. We fired at over 200 rounds without a single malfunction. The ag guns are accurate, easy to handle, very easy for a woman to handle this gun. Um, the only problem I've seen in 12 years working at Moss Pond with this gun, we had one that had a broken trigger spring. Now that could happen to any gun. I've, so, I've seen Beretta 92 FS's come through more often with broken return springs than I have a Bursa. I have sold and shot so many of these 
uh, with students at the range, I can highly recommend this gun. People say, well, I never heard of a Bursa. They've been making this gun for over 40 years, and I've never seen a problem with one. And if one of these guns malfunctions, it's not the gun's fault, it's the ammunition you're shooting at it. I'm going to tell you one thing about this gun, too. And, and, you know, me and Barry, when we were going and selecting the guns for this video, we were almost kind of arguing a little bit about which one should make it into the video. And Bursa does make a 15-shot double stack 380 uh, that's called the Bursa Plus. Mm -hmm. If you're not concerned about concealability, that is an excellent gun. But again, when we were selecting the guns for this video, we decided that the only guns that we wanted to make into the video were ones that we would personally recommend and choose ourselves ourselves if we had to spend the money our you know our own money on these guns these are ones that we would select I like the concealed carry model because the sights are nice and low profile it's got the low profile hammer which is awesome double single action nice slim profile uh, the frame everything has just been slimmed down to accommodate you know facilitate easier uh, hiding of the gun on your person and really if the Makarov PM did not exist I would have five or six of these. That's how much I like them. They're wonderful guns. Uh, they shoot great. They're reliable. And uh, like Barry said, I, I have never personally heard of anybody having any real issues out of these guns ever, nor have I myself. Um, for me, it would be the concealed carry model or the Bursa Thunder Plus. The reason the Thunder Plus did not make it into the video is because uh, at the time of this writing, the um, Thunder Plus is about $400. So it's a little bit more money. So some of you be ready for that, should you choose to go that route. Check out the little phone for your little hideout gun. This is a uh, North American Arms Pub 22 Magnum. Uh, this gun is, uh, is within the price range that you want to spend. This is a great little hideout gun. I wouldn't recommend this for primary carry, but this little gun will save your life. I've personally seen a woman killed with one of these, and her boyfriend weighed about 275 pounds he was shot center chest with one of these, and he was—he went down like a sack of potatoes. This is not a toy, and a 22 Magnum. This will—this will hurt somebody, and kill somebody uh, very easily. People laugh at this. Well, that's just a toy. No, it isn't. This is a 22 Magnum, and they've got new bullets out now, like the CCI TNT hollow points and things like that. And this—I've done penetration tests with this in wet phone books. This uh, 22 mag out of this gun will penetrate more wet paper than a 22 CCI mini mag out of a rifle. That's right. So it's, this, has, this does have a lot of stopping power, and this is something that you can have with you. When you don't need a gun, you can have this in your pocket or whatever, and nobody even knows you have it. Sometimes you'll even forget you have it yourself. The only good carry gun is the one that you'll actually it's, carry. It's the one you, you carry and have in your and hand. And when people come in here looking for a carry gun, I mean, of course, we'll sell them different things, whatever they want. We'll take their, you know, opinions and what they're looking to get into consideration. But we always shoot it to people honest. And honestly, I have recommended this gun to more people than you would probably believe. And it's, it's a great little setup. It's easy to train someone on how to use it. They're easy to take care of. It's really easy to confirm if it's loaded or not. Even somebody with a basic amount of training can take, you know, spin the cylinder see if it's empty. They're just great little guns. They're easy to shoot. Now granted, yes, a setup like this, where it loses points compared to the other guns, is that this is probably not something you're going to take to the range and shoot bullseyes with every day. But it's a gun that you will carry every day and can potentially save your life. Also, one more before we close on this one. North American Arms is a great company. We have sent two of these back. They totally rebuilt them in charge of shipping. Now you can wear one of these out, but it takes a long time. And when you do, they rebuild it and they charge you shipping. This is a wonderful company right here. Wonderful service. So always keep that in mind as well. Now when we were considering different guns to put into this video, you know, because this is basically five guns. Now the, the two Smith & Wessons, of course, we were just comparing and contrasting the differences between the older Sigma and the newer one. But that counts as one and then the three here. The last one, uh, I wish that we had a Makarov PM in uh, stock to show you guys in this video, but the closest thing that I have to it is this P64. It's Polish. Uh, Polish uh, P64, made in uh, 1973. It is a surplus handgun. But the reason that I recommend Makarovs to people is because for the price that they sell for, they have very attractive entry level price. Um, if you guys saw the Makarov shootout we did, where uh, we shot different types of Macs. Unfortunately, the P64 was not included in that video, 
uh, because I don't own one of these. This is really one of the only Macaraw variants I don't own, uh, but we do have one in stock. Maybe that'll change soon. I might uh, have to pick this little jewel up to add to the collection. But I do like to recommend Macaraw pistols because most uh, basic uh, versions of them sell for well under $300 on an average basis. So that's within the $350 price range that we uh, you know, set forth for this video. Um, magazines for some of the variants can be expensive. That's one downside. The P64 mags um, usually sell for around $25, $30 a piece, so a little bit pricey there on some of the magazines. One thing we didn't mention on the other uh, guns were the magazine costs. Uh, the cost for upkeeping a gun is something that you should factor in when buying one. Of course, Bursa magazines, unfortunately, are expensive. kel magazines are not the cheapest things in the world. They're going to be well in the $30 range or more. Uh, same thing on the Smith mags. All of the spare magazines for the guns we showed you are inheritedly a little bit expensive. But back to the Mac. Fires a 9x18 caliber cartridge, uh, which is pretty much the most power you can fit in a straight blowback gun design. That's what they originally intended the, the bullet to be, is uh, basically the most power they can fit in a blowback. I have personally fired a large number of Macaraws over the years, and I've never shot one that wasn't accurate. I never shot one that wasn't 100% reliable, and I've never owned one that wasn't incredibly easy to disassemble, maintain, and clean. So really, for me personally, uh, my top pick out of all these guns, especially if money were an option, I would choose a Mac over anything else. Um, I don't know what, I'm pretty sure Barry, you'd probably choose the Sigma, wouldn't you, for the high cap? If this was my only choice, yes, okay. uh, I would choose the, uh, the new Sigma. I would say the new Sigma would be hard to turn down. If you're looking for a lot of firepower, you do have 15 rounds in your hand ready to go, and that is an attractive thing for a lot of people. Uh, me personally, I'm comfortable carrying an 8-shot gun. I carried a 1911 for years, and of course, you know, 8 shots there, no issues. Um, the Makarov, not a problem there. Um, I have never felt inadequately armed carrying a Mac of any type. Now, of course, the CZ-82, it's always going to be a nice setup, CZ83, whichever, because you do have double stack mag, holds a lot of ammo. But even with a single stack Makarov, I have never felt like I wasn't armed well. And I would say for the money, like this particular gun, I believe, is actually 239. So this is the cheapest of the ones that we've showed you so far. Now, if you can get over the horrendous double action on this gun, the single's excellent, reliability, of course, is excellent. It fires a reasonably powerful cartridge. It's not going to win any beauty contests, but it doesn't have to. Knowledgeable people about guns, if they knew about these, if they knew about these and these were widely available, these things would be flying off the ship. Absolutely. Flying off the ship. It's and a very the, reliable gun, as Eric said, and so on yeah. and so forth. And it's, it's, well, you know, and in the big scheme of things also, is that these guns are actually cheaper to shoot than 380. Yeah. You know, a lot of people will take the 380 uh, barrels and convert their Makarov to 380, thinking that they're going to save money, when really you actually end up spending more money shooting 380 than you would 9x18. So that's another thing to consider. If you're strapped for money and you can't afford a lot of the ammo, you can pick up some of the steel case wolf ammo and uh, run these guns just fine. Well, also, I had a, I had a German Stasi Makarov years ago. This was like 25 years ago. You couldn't get any ammunition for it except ball ammunition, and that was even hard to find. But now Hornady has expanding rounds for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, they're no, and no more expensive than a good 380. Nope. And it's more powerful than a 380. Mm -hmm. And uh, in closing on this Sigma, uh, this gun, I like it a lot because it's, there's a lot of Glock here. This gun is almost an identical copy of a Glock. In fact, they got sued over it, and they have to pay a uh, Glock a royalty every time they sell one. But this is, uh, and if you'll also notice, a lot of the new guns, the uh, the Caracal, all these other guns, there are a lot of Glock influence now. You see this trigger type of mechanism on a lot of guns now. Uh, the Rugers, uh, SR9, SR40s, yep. all these new guns coming out have some a little bit of Glock in them somewhere. Well, I think more and more companies now are jumping on the idea of a polymer frame, striker-fired gun. And especially when you consider that the original patents for the Glock are starting to run out. I mean, the original patent was from, what, like 82? Well, the, the, 83, Glock, something the Glock, like that? I believe, arrived on the shores of the U.S. in 85. 85. But, the, but okay. they, I think it was designed in 82. 82. Okay. So, uh, uh, 
correct us if we're wrong on that on that fact. I mean, we, we haven't looked that up, but but there's a lot of new guns now that's got Glock influence. In it. How long does the patent these days last? Do you know? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something to look into, or uh, gun patents. And there be. again, I don't know whether the patent can be renewed. Right, right. But the point is, is that there are a lot of guns out now that are that are following Glock's lead with the you know polymer frame, striker fire, uh, your typical Glock fare that you would expect. You know, there's a lot of companies that are doing that now. But we'll leave you guys with that. And these are the guns as of right now we think are the best buys for the money. And uh, of course, there are a lot of good quality used guns out there that you can get for 350 or less. Um, that are good quality setups. Of course, that's going to depend on your local economy, your local market, what you can expect to find, where you live. Unfortunately for a lot of us, used guns have to be purchased locally. No. Some of you like to deal with gun broker, but if you're a first time gun buyer, I would strongly suggest staying away from gun broker and actually coming in and checking the gun out that you're going to buy, seeing how it fits in your hand, and if possible, get with a good instructor like Barry, have him take you out, let you shoot it, get used to it, you have a strong idea of what's going to work for you. Now, like, like Eric said, I do gun instruction, and we somebody will come in here and never bought a gun before. We'll take them through the whole store, and they decide on a gun. They say, well, if they want to buy this gun for X number of dollars. Well, I'll take them and do a gun class with it, and then I'll let all my students shoot my Glock 19 before they leave the range, and all of them fall in love with it. Now, I'm not a Glockaholic. I'm just saying that, that this is a good gun, but the trigger... The trigger is much harder to pull on this gun, and it's harder to train someone to shoot accurately with this gun than with a Glock, or several other guns in here. That's right. But uh, there again, this this uh, gun facts was about you know affordable guns. If you only have three hundred and fifty dollars to spend, or maybe even less than that, you can get you can get a, a gun that will protect you adequately. That's right. So uh, and and like I said though, a lot of people when they pick their first gun, like Eric was saying, buying something off the internet or going by a friend. Go to a gun store and, let, and try the guns in your hand. If you want to, go to the range and rent a gun. If you want to, if you want to buy one of these or one of these, go to the range and rent, rent them and shoot them. That's right. Drive them before you buy them. That's right. And it'll save you a lot of money and a lot of grief. And well, um, well, we will, uh, you know, leave you guys with that information for what it's worth to you. Um, I know. I mean, I've been involved in the gun industry for a number of years. I know Barry's been in a number of years. This is our experience from the gun industry, and we try to pass it along to you guys. In a future video, I will actually tag along on one of Barry's gun classes. We're going to do one of my gun classes, and we're going to put it on YouTube. Yeah, maybe not the whole thing, because we've got to leave some secrets for the uh, legendary Barry Elton. Well, yeah, yeah, but we're going, we're, out, the yeah. gist of the whole thing is going to be uh, uh, the, the main part of my training is, is safe handling, disassembly cleaning, uh, marksmanship, trigger pull, things like that. I, I do the basics. I don't do none of the combat courses, nothing like that. I take someone who's never owned a gun before and I take them to the range and we work with them and I'll have them shooting before they leave. That's right. And uh, they will be able to defend themselves. They'll be able to handle their gun competently. Yeah. But like Eric said, pretty soon we're going to go to the range and uh, I already arranged it down there today with the manager. He said it would be fine. And we're going to do a little uh, gun class video. Yeah. That'll be coming soon guys. for you guys. Coming up pretty soon. And I'd like to thank the three or four subscribers that called us today, thanking us for these videos, because that gives that makes me want to do more. Yeah, oh yeah. And I've gotten several calls today too. I mean, right. uh, I know I probably talked about the same amount easily. So oh, yeah. on any given day, we have between eight and twelve, sometimes as many fifteen people yeah, call. Call and from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, the last call today was from Australia. That's right. So. Uh, Y'all have a good evening, and this is going to conclude this for this evening, and uh, we hope you have a good one, and may God bless you. Absolutely. And uh, you'll see us soon again. All right. We'll have another gun cry coming up Friday for you guys, hopefully. Got it. All right.